name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, Allah glorified be he and high exalted said, Indeed, Allah and his angels send blessing on the Prophet. O you who believe, send blessing on him and pray peace. May the peace and blessing of Allah be upon Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, and upon his pure family, pure of associating partners with Allah, and upon the followers of the truth. We will start our topic searching in the clear verses of the book regarding choosing the Caliph of Allah. Is it of the right of any of the servants of Allah to choose his Caliph, or do they have any authority over that? Nay, it is Allah who chooses because his servant do not know, except what Allah, the Most Wise, the All-Knower, teaches them. Allah glorified be he and high exalted said, So when I have fully formed him and blown into him of my spirit, then fall down in prostration before him. So the angel prostrated themselves, all of them altogether, except it please. He acted arrogantly and was of the disbelievers. He, God said, O oh, Iblis, what prevented you from prostrating before whom I created by my own two hands? Were you overcome by arrogance? Or are you of those who think of themselves exalted? He said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and created him from clay. He, God said, then get out of it, the garden. For you have been outcasted. And indeed, upon you is my curse until the day of judgment or religion. He please said, O Lord, respite me to the day they are resurrected. He, God said, then you are among who are respited until the day of the time known. He said, by your honor, I will deceive them all, except your servants among them who are sincere. So choosing the Caliph of Allah is a matter which his decision is only to Allah and not to any of his servants. Allah sent his command to them to obey his caliph and prostrate to the command of Allah. Allah glorified be he and high exalted said, Behold, we said to the angel, prostrate to Adam. So they prostrated, except to please. He was of the jinn and he transgressed against the command of his Lord. Do you then take him? and his offspring as allies, helpers, other than me, while they are unto you an enemy, how wretched for the unjust as an alternative. Allah did not ask the opinion of his angels withdrawn near to him regarding choosing his caliph because they have no authority whatsoever in that. It is Allah who chooses his caliph and commands them to bow in prostrating to him. In line with the verses, Allah glorified be he and high exalted said, And when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I am creating a human from clay, and when I have fully formed him and blown into him of my spirit, fall down on prostration before him. But at the beginning, before Allah created Adam, peace be upon him, the angels were taken by jealousy without just cause, as they see that they are more deserved that the Caliph of Allah be from them. The one that Allah will make his Caliph over angels and jinn and men, so they see that they have more right in Caliphate than other servants and are more worthy to get this great honor that the Caliph of Allah is chosen from them. So they objected and protested and said, While we glorify you with your praise and sanctify your wholeness, when your Lord said to the angels, I am placing a Caliph in earth, they said, Are you going to to place therein who cooperates in it and sheds blood while we glorify you with your praise 
and sanctify your wholeness? He, God said, Surely I know what you do not know. Allah was not pleased with what the angels said as they do not have knowledge of the greatest name of Allah. And they made their worshipping Allah for a reward in return, which is that Allah honors them by choosing his caliph over his kingdom from them. And they see that they are more deserved of that than other species that he created. So they said by their own tongue what is not in their heart, that the caliph of Allah will make mischief on earth and shed blood. They said, are you going to place therein who corporates in it and sheds blood while we glorify you with your praise and sanctify your wholeness? He said, surely I know what, do not, what you do not know. Allah was not pleased with their saying and he kept that hidden within his self and only replied by saying, surely I know what you do not know. Meaning that they are not more knowledgeable than their God. They exceeded their limit, crossed their lines in what they have no right of, and that is a matter in which they have nothing to do with. Allah kept that hidden and did not show it until he created Adam and chose him and increased him in knowledge over the knowledge of the angels. That is to make knowledge the proof for caliphate and imamat at all times and places. The servants of Allah do not know more than Allah to choose his caliph, beside him glorified and sublimely exalted is he. Allah glorified be he and high exalted said, when your Lord said to the angels, I am placing a caliph in earth, they said, Are you going to place therein who corporates in it and sheds blood, while we glorify you with your praise and sanctify your wholeness? He said, Surely, I know what you do not know. And he taught Adam the names, all of them. Then he presented them before the angels, and he said, Tell me the names of these if you are truthful. They said, Glory be to you. We have no knowledge except whatever you have taught us. For you are the all-knowing, the all-wise. Then he said, O Adam, inform them of their names. Then when Adam had informed them the names of those, he got said, Did I not say to you that I know the rib, unseen, unknown, of the heavens and of the earth, and I know what you reveal and what you were concealing? And when we said to the angel, prostrate to Adam, so they prostrated except for Iblis, he refused and acted arrogantly, and he was of the disbelievers. Angels did not know that they exceeded their limits in what they don't have the right of, and that they have nothing to do with this. Nay, it is all to Allah to choose his caliph among his servants. It is not fitting of his servants to choose the caliph of Allah besides him. They are not who portion out the mercy of Allah, and they do not know more than their God glorified, sublimely, exalted is he. So the angels withdrawn near to Allah did not know that they crossed their limits in what is the authority of Allah. Only until Allah had created Adam, peace be upon him, and increased him in knowledge over all of them. He, God said, Tell me the names of these if you are truthful. No, God but Allah, there is no partner associated with him. He does not make mistakes 
while all his servants do. How so the angels, because of their mistake, is interfering in what is not of their rights, and their objection to the decision of their God, as if they know more than him glorified, and sublimely exalted is he, for that they are no longer among the truthful until they are repent to Allah and glorify him that he is the all-wise, the all-knower, and that they have no knowledge except what Allah taught them. Glorify be to him. You find that Allah, the Lord of the worlds, told his angels that they are untruthful, claiming that they know more than their God, the all-wise, the all-knower. For that Allah said to his angels, Tell me the names of these if you are truthful. At this point, the angels realized that they exceeded their limits in what is the right of their Lord only. They realized that their God is no longer pleased with them and they knew their mistake, that they don't know more than Allah, glorify be to him. So they repented and glorified their Lord and said, They said, Glory be to you. We have no knowledge except whatever you have told us. For you are the all-knowing, the all-wise. Then Allah wanted to teach his angels and jinn and men what the proof from the most gracious is for the one he chose as his caliph. It is to increase him in knowledge. Allah made that as a proof of caliphate on earth at all times and places until the day of judgment. And he taught Adam the names, all of them, and he presented them before the angels and he said, Tell me the names of these if you are truthful. They said, Glory be to you. We have no knowledge except whatever you have taught us. For you are the all-knowing, the all-wise. Then he said, O Adam, inform them of their names. Then when Adam had informed them the names of those, he got said, Did I not say to you that I know the ghaib, unseen, unknown, of the heavens and of the earth? And I know what you reveal and what you were concealing. And when we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam, so they prostrated except for Iblis, he refused and acted arrogantly and was of the disbelievers. Allah glorified be he and high exalted said, He said, what prevented you to prostrate when I commanded you? He, Iblis, said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and created him from clay. Look how Allah sent his command to his servants to prostrate in homage to his caliph. Allah glorified be he and high exalted, said. He said, what prevented you to prostrate when I commanded you? He said, I am better than him. You created me from fire and created him from clay. But since Iblis, Satan, refused to obey the command of Allah to obey the caliph that Allah has chosen in the earth, Allah cursed him because of his rejection and said, Then get out of it. The garden, for you have been outcasted, and indeed upon you is the curse until the day of religion, judgment. He Iblis said, O Lord, respite me to the day they are resurrected. He said, Then you are among who are respited until the day of the time known. He said, My Lord, for you have let me go in error, I will adorn to them on the earth, and I will deceive them all. 
except your servants among them who are sincere? He, God said, this is a path to me that is straight. Surely, my servant, you have no authority over them except those who choose to follow you from the perverse. Surely, hell is the promise for them all. It has seven gates. To each gate is them a portion allotted. See what Iblis said. For you have let me go in error, and your Lord does not wrong anyone. The question here is, why did Allah throw Iblis out of the right way? The answer is because he sees himself as someone who has the right of caliphate more than Adam. And he was angry with his God. Why did Allah honor Adam and made him the caliph over angels and jinn? Iblis sees that he has the right of that saying that he is created of fire while Adam was created of dust and earth. But he does not know more than his God. And because of his arrogance, Allah let his heart deviate. Look at the reason why Allah let Iblis go astray without, without injustice. Allah glorified be he and high exalted said, And when we said to the angels, Prostrate to Adam, say so they prostrated except Iblis, he said, Am I to prostrate to whom you created from clay? He said, See this whom you have honored over me, if you delay me until the day of resurrection, I will surely seize his descendants, except a few. He said, Go for whoever follows you of them, then hell shall be the recompense of you all, a recompense most ample. Be fool, those whom you can of them with your voice, and bring upon them your cavalry and your infantry, and share with them their wealth and children, and make promises to them. But Satan does not promise them except deception. Indeed, my servants, you have over them no authority, and enough is your Lord of disposer and affairs. The question that the Imam Mahdi put for the people of Shayat and Sunnah is if it is not of the right of the angels withdrawn near to Allah, neither to the jinn, to interfere in regards to choosing the caliph of Allah beside him, then how could it be the right of Sunnah and Shia to choose the caliph of Allah, the Imam Mahdi? Don't you fear Allah? Here comes the Imam Mahdi unto you in time appointed in the book of Allah and Allah chose him as caliph on the earth and supported him with the proof of leadership and caliphate so increased him in knowledge and made him dominant over them so nanjiat by the knowledge of the book the glorious Quran after all that the Shia people say, you are not but a liar, since you are not Imam Muhammad, son of Hassan al Askari, and Caliph of Allah, the Imam Mahdi. Then I, the true Imam Mahdi, reply and say, Allah glorified be He, and exalted said, Allah has taken a son, exalted He is, to have a son. He is the self-sufficient, he is whatsoever is in the heavens and the earth. Do you have proof for this? Do you say of Allah which you have not known? Say, Balafri, those who can fabricate unto Allah lies shall not succeed. And Allah glorified be he and high exalted said, Say, bring forth your proof if you are truthful do you think that the proof comes from your tales and fables that you are yourselves composing 
Far, far is that from being the truth, nay, the condition for the proof is that is comes from Allah, the most gracious, in line with the following verse. Say, bring forth your proof. This is the message for those with me and the message of those before me. But most of them do not know the truth, so they turn away. Don't you know that the glorious Quran is a truthful proof from the Lord of the world to all people? The Quran is a robe of Allah, the most trustworthy handhold. Whoever holds fast to it is guided to the straight path. Allah glorified be he and high exalted said, O people, a proof has come to you from your Lord, and we have sent down to you a clear light. Those who believe in Allah and hold fast to it, Allah will enter them into mercy from Him and grace, and Allah will guide them to Him on a straight path. Then how do you want the Imam Mahdi to put aside the book of Allah, the glorious Quran, and abandon it, and then argue with your fables and your invented tales that contracted the ruling of proof from Allah, the most gracious in the glorious Quran. Don't you know that Allah is he who chooses his caliph and that is not of you rights of prophet to interfere regarding the matter of choosing the caliph of Allah? Allah chooses his caliph and increases him in knowledge so that it becomes a proof from Allah the most gracious and that he is caliph of Allah over you and that Allah chose him as your imam, it would not be left for the prophets to choose imams bef beside Allah. But it is a matter which is to Allah, no associate partner with him. Look at the loot. peace be upon him, the imam of children of Israel did their Prophet choose him apart from Allah, Allah glorified be he and high exalted said. And their prophet said to them, Allah has raised you to Talut as a king. They said, How should he have the sovereignty over us when we have better right of sovereignty than him? And he has not been given abundance of wills. He said, Allah has chosen him over you and has increased him with abundantly in knowledge and body. And Allah gives him sovereignty to whomsoever he wills. Allah is incomposing in favor all knowing. Therefore, the prophet has no rights to choose imams for people over choice of Allah. Then how do you? Shiites and Sunnah claim that it is of your right to choose the Caliph of Allah, the Imam Mahdi, rather than the choice of Allah when you believe that the Imam Mahdi is indeed the Caliph of Allah. How could it be of your right to choose the Caliph of Allah if Allah has not chosen him and has not increased him in knowledge of the book over all of you? Allah increased his Caliph in knowledge of the book and not the knowledge of the fables that you have hold fast to you, which is contracted the law of caliphate in the book of Allah. Do you then claim that you believe in the glories of Quran? You are untruthful. It is the truth from your God, but you hate the truth, O people of Sanna and Shiat. I swear by Allah, the one, the dominant, who no eyesight grasp him, whom his grasp is over all eyesight, that if you do not follow the remembrance, the book of Allah before the night outstrip the daytime, that Allah will make me appear, proclaim me over with atonement, and that makes hair white of terror, when hearts reach your throats with fright, and you will humbly Submissive, O people, who turn away from taking the book of Allah as a judge. Allah is my witness. He is sufficient as a witness that I am the Imam Mahdi, whom the holds fast to the, the book of Allah, the glorious Quran, the rope of Allah that is the most trustworthy handhold that never breaks, nor changed, nor 
obliterated is the word of Allah, while you hold fast to tales from the devil that always coming contracting the clear verses of the book. You are like someone who is holding fast to a thread of spider web, or you who hold fast to tales that came from the devil, which came from other than Allah, for that you find therein much discrepancy and differences from what is in the clear verses of the glorious Quran. I, the awaited Mahdi, announce that the challenge in taking of the book of Allah for the judge the reminder which is preserved from being alerted by human devils and I call all people of Shia and Sunnah and all who split up their religion and became mere sects, each party rejoicing in what they have and I call them all to take the book of Allah, the glorious Quran, as a judge to judge among them in all what they differed about. I will derive the ruling of Allah with the truth from the clear verses of the Quran and whatever comes in your fabricated tales and fables contracting the clear verses of the Quran I will by the clear verses of the glorious Quran approve them and scatter them like ashes on which the wind blows furiously on tempestuous days shall I seek for a judge other than Allah when it is he who sent down the book explained in detail. Oh, far, far is that, O oh, ignorance. O oh, Muslims, Christian, Jewish, I call upon you to take the book of Allah as a judge in whatever you differ in. Don't you know that Allah has made the glorious Quran dominant over the Torah and the Bible? And the Prophet's Hadith, Sunnah teaching, the duty of the Imam Mahdi is, is only to bring you the judgment ruling of Allah from the clear verses of the book as I brought the judgment ruling regarding the Caliph of Allah, who is the chosen among the servants by the worship God only. And Allah sends you his command to obey his Caliph, the awaited Mahdi. If you find out that Allah increased him in knowledge above all of you and dominated you by the judgment of Allah from the clear verses of the book, don't you, O people of Sana and Shia, who refuse to obey the awaited Mahdi, the chosen caliph of Allah, fear that Allah might curse you as he cursed Iblis who refused to obey and was Houthi at the command of his God? The command of Allah has come now with the truth and the age of the awaited Mahdi has, came, has come. May the curse of Allah be upon Nasir Muhammad al-Yamani if he is not the awaited Mahdi that was chosen by Allah, the Lord of the world. Or may the curse of Allah be upon those who refuse to obey and who are Houthi and turn away from the one who calls you to take the glor glorious of Quran as a judge, far, far it is that I hold fast to anything other than the robe of Allah and disobey the command of Allah in the clear verses of the book when Allah. Glorified be he and high exalted said, and hold fast together to the robe of Allah and be not divided. Don't you know? what the robe of Allah is that Allah commanded you to be hold fast to and reject whatever contracted it it is the light of Allah and the glories of Quran whoever he is the hold fast to it it's guided to the straight path Allah glorified be he and high exalted said O people a proof has come to you from your Lord and we have sent down to you a clear light. Those who believe in Allah and hold fast to it, Allah will er enter them into a mercy from him and grace, and Allah will guide them to him and straight path. What kind of debate and decision is it that you want if it doesn't include knowledge from the book of Allah?
the glorious Quran. How can the awaited Mahdi prove his argument to you and make your mouths closed by the logic of the Book of Allah, the glorious Quran? If I don't argue against you by the same sure knowledge that my grandfather from the generations Muhammad peace be upon him argued by, or do you want to be awaited Imam Mahdi to follow your fabricated fails and that is why you don't like to take the glorious Quran as your judge? You have nothing to stand upon, O people of Sunnah and Shia, until you acted according to the Book of Allah and the glorious Quran, what is resembled between you and Shia and Sunnah and between Jew Jews and Christians. Allah glorified, and be he, and high exalted said, and the Jews said, The Nazarenes, Christians, are not standing upon anything and the Nazarenes Christians said that the Jews are not standing upon anything and yet they both recite the book. Do you know that what Allah means by they both recite the book? It means that they believe in the books of Allah, the Torah and the Bible and recite them but do not act according to the Torah, neither the gospel that is why they are upon nothing, neither Jews nor Christians. Allah glorified be he and high exalted said, O people of the book, you are not upon anything until you act according to the Torah and the Injil, Gospel, and what has been sent down to you from your Lord. You are the same, O people of the Shiites and, Sun and Sunnah, you do not stand upon anything until you act according to the glorious Quran that I am calling you to, to take it clear verses as a judge if you believe in it. Peace be upon the messengers of Allah and praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the chosen Caliph of Allah, Imam Nasser Muhammad al-Yamani.